Sorcery is a new Roblox Jujutsu Kaisen game that takes heavy inspiration from other games like Deep Woken. And there are a lot of opinions surrounding it. Some positive, some negative, some really negative. It had an open testing a while back, but as of the time of me making this video, that open testing is now over. I wanted to talk about what this game had to offer, what I think it did terribly wrong, if it can improve, or if it's going to end up failing like many games that came before it. My name is Rogue, and I suck at making intros. Conceptually, I feel like I've already brought up the main things with this game. Imagine taking the main mechanics and aesthetic of something like Deep Woken, but giving it a Jujutsu Kaisen theme. The inspiration from these games is very apparent. Graphics and style-wise, the maps look like they perfectly fit into each other's games. It borrows sound effects. Its no hand-holding difficulty is also exactly how games like Deep Woken operate. But what I feel is the most obvious form of ripping off, I mean, inspiration, is its combat. Just like Deep Woken, it primarily revolves around three defensive mechanics that I am sure everyone is familiar with. Parrying, blocking, and dodging. Rather or not it does this well, I will talk about later in this video, but I do like that it is at least copying from a game that has great combat mechanics. In terms of its concept, I definitely say it's not bad. It is at least not the 500th Blocks Fruits clone. There's a lot to expand with it, and I think that at least in this department, there's a lot of potential. This is unfortunately where the game begins to struggle. You have your basic progression, which you can do by completing one of four missions. I do think some of these missions are a little too difficult for people starting, which can drive away new players. But once you've practiced the mechanics a bit, just like any other game, it does become easier. The worst of the missions is the one where you engage with a cursed object. In this mission, you first need to locate a box. You do this with one of the game's cool mechanics, Cursed Sense, where obviously you can sense cursed energy, such as the cursed energy that comes from this box. Once you've found it, you stand over it for about 2 minutes, spamming G, waiting for the timer to go out. This is boring. Like, super boring. It'd be one thing if this mission gave you better loot, thus giving you more incentive to complete it. But as far as I can tell, the loot you get is the exact same. I'd like to see it reworked, maybe you need to defend the box from enemies that run over to retrieve it, and you need to fend them off. The next mission is the rescue mission. Normal people have been taken by curses, and you need to use your curse sense to first locate them, then bring them to a rescue point. While doing this, you have the option to either stealthily rescue everyone without being caught, or you can go in with no intention of being quiet and exercise every curse you see, which is actually the next mission, exercise every curse within an area. As far as I know, there's only three curses you actually need to find in these missions, and as it says, you simply get rid of them before the timer runs out. It's the simplest mission mission and I think a cool way to improve on it would be to add stronger curses. They could have their own curse techniques and their own domains and if you beat them they obviously would give better loot. The final and rarest mission is where you're either hunting down another player or another player is hunting you down as you complete another mission. It's your standard PvP mission but if you have to do it at the same time as, I don't know, rescuing people, you very likely cannot complete both of them as the time limit is too restricting. If I could suggest a new mission, I think something like a raid where you and a bunch of other players need to jump a boss. Maybe Maharaga, the King of Curses, Jogo, Mahito, or even Go 
Gojo would be a lot of fun. Doing these missions also allows you to rank up. You start off as an innate sorcerer, working up to a grade 4, a grade 3, a grade 2, a grade 1, and finally a special grade. But before you can become a special grade, there is the Coaling Games, which is required if you want to progress. To participate in the Coaling Games, you first need to be level 99. If you don't complete Coaling Games, you can't go above level 99. Completing it, of course, allows you to keep going in your progression, allowing you to unlock Reverse Curse Technique, Domain Expansion, and rank up to a special grade. While fun in concept, this mode is flawed. Let's first explain how the mode works. It's simple, you start with 40 minutes. 5 minutes will be taken away for every player you defeat. If you are defeated, you have to enter a new calling games and start over. You only need to defeat one player, then wait out the timer. But you can also speed up the timer by defeating even more players. Once the timer is up, you head to an extraction point and you're done. Sounds fun, right? Well, the problem is if you meet the minimum requirement, actually meet four times the requirement, you still need to wait around for another 20 minutes before you're allowed to leave. I get what they were going for, simply being able to leave after getting one elimination would make it way too easy. But as it is right now, you're spending most of calling games just hiding and doing nothing. Again, you could get even more eliminations to speed up the time, but this is both risky and not even guaranteed to work since most players are hiding by the time you get an elimination. Besides that, there's basic progression. You can get your domain by unlocking meditation, which happens any time between reaching level 99 and level 150, which I think is dumb. It should be guaranteed at a set level. After you get meditation, you can get a void key and enter the void. Talk to Yuki, meditate for about 20 minutes, fall a lot, and boom, you have your domain expansion. Speaking of unlocking your abilities, unlocking your innate technique requires you enter the dream world. Pokemon fans, hi I'm one of you, which can either happen at random from completing or failing a mission, or you can use an item that puts you to sleep. You then have to follow the sound of your soul and embrace it when you find it. Then you have to complete a very difficult parkour course. I don't know why I was struggling so much here. Anyways, find your soul again, embrace it one more time, and unlock your innate techniques. You can also max out your build using cursed gems to level up your cursed techniques. You can stack up a bunch of cursed tickets so Mahito Ill, lets you reroll your clan, domain, and innate technique until you get what you want. Oh, rerolling, that reminds me. This game has a lot of issues, but what I think is without a doubt the worst one is its use of a gotcha system. In this game, your domain expansion, your clan, which determines passive stat buffs along with your very innate curse technique, are all left to chance. If you know me, you know I hate gotcha systems. Leaving out a giant part of the game to chance, no matter how many workarounds you put to it, isn't fun. Actually, needing to put workarounds should tell these developers that gotcha systems suck. Apart from that, just about everything else is also left to chance. If you have Mimicry or Shrine, you can eat the fingers of the King of Curses. For Mimicry, eating one allows you to have an extra move. For Shrine, eating three gives you Furnace. Eating ten gives you World Cutting Slash. Here's the thing, these fingers are rare. As in, so rare, everyone wants them. Going as far as being willing to pay real money for them. This is absurd, which also does smoothly bring us to another issue. The trade market is already terrible. There are a bunch of items in the same rarity tier as the fingers, but everyone only wants the fingers because they are just that much more useful. I think the solution is to either make the fingers easier to obtain, or to add more items that are just as useful, like maybe having Limitless and finding 6 eyes that belong to Gojo clan members allows you to unlock Infinity. Besides the fingers, the item required to unlock Heavenly Restriction, the thing that makes you like Toji and Maki, is also super rare. So is Heavenly Spear. So is the item that lets you redo your stats. So is the item that lets you unlock your domain expansion. What I think makes this worse is that you're 
bank only allows you to store four items, which right now is already too little and that problem will grow as more items get added. Trading itself is also super risky. There's no trading lobby. You have to show up to a public server, drop your item and hope whoever you are trading with does the same. This can go wrong in several ways. A person who is hiding nearby can grab your item or both your items. The person you're trading with can just drop the wrong item. Since all drop items appear the same in the overworld and you won't know what it is until it's too late. In terms of PvE and PvP balance, sometimes the enemies just do an absurd amount of damage, and working around some of their moves can become borderline impossible. The innate techniques and domains are beyond unbalanced. Shrine has 8 moves, 2 of them being ultimates. Limitless only has three. The favoritism is crazy. A less serious issue is how this game claims to have no handholding, but there's an entire tutorial that breaks down all the game's mechanics. That doesn't feel like little to no handholding as the game suggests. That feels like a lot of handholding. Mind you, I like tutorials, Roblox games definitely should have them. I do feel like this no handholding gimmick that's become somewhat popular is just an excuse for Roblox developers to be lazy. It's just weird because the game implies there wouldn't be one. Overall, this game is only 2 months into development and is being developed by mainly one person. So for what it is under those conditions, I would say this is actually pretty impressive. I do think it has a lot of promise, but not only has that been said for several Roblox games that end up disappointing, the game itself has a lot of issues it needs to work through if it doesn't want to become the next potential man. For what it is, how early it is in development, I think a 6 out of 10 is fair. Obviously, if this had been a full release, giving it anything higher than a 3, would be nonsense. But again, this was made by one person in just two months, so I can give them some slack. What would you give this game? Something higher? Something lower? What game should I review next? Let me know in the comments. My name is Rogue, and I also suck at making outros.